Hello everyone, we are the Group 10 and we are here today to discuss about the works of Juan Luna and Fernando Amarsolo paintings. So this is the contents for the report. First, we have the background of the author. Second, historical context of the document. Third, analysis of the important historical information found in the document. Fourth, contribution of the document understanding the grand narrative of Philippine history. Fifth, relevance of the document. And lastly, we have the references. So first, we have background of the author. But before we start, I would like to formally introduce these two historical Filipino painters, Juan Luna y Novicio and Fernando Amarsolo y Cueto. Juan Luna y Novicio was born on the 23rd of October in 1857 and was died on the 7th of December in 1899. He is better known as Juan Luna. He was a Filipino painter a sculptor and a political activist of the Philippine Revolution during the late 19th century. He became one of the first recognized Philippine artists. Without any question, Juan Luna is the most well-known and acclaimed Filipino artist in Philippine history. Luna is renowned for his dynamic and distinctive style, as well as his dramatic and compelling canvases, and is best recognized for his iconic and astonishing masterpieces such as Polarium, Blood Compact, and the death of Cleopatra. One of the most notable representations of the Romanticism and Realism schools of art is his work. Juan was not only a talented artist, he was also a revolutionary and a powerful political figure who took part in the late 19th century Philippine Revolution. Fernando Amrisolo y Cueto was born on the 30th of May in 1892 and died on the 26th of April in 1972. On May 30, 1892, Fernando Marsolo was born in Manila, Paco neighborhood. At age 13, he began working as an apprentice for his mother's first cousin, the renowned Filipino artist Fabian de la Rosa. Amarsolo began his education in 1909 at the Liceo de Manila before enrolling in the University of the Philippines Fine Arts Program, from which he graduated, graduated in 1914. After working three years as a commercial artist and part-time instructor at the university, he studied at the Escuela de San Fernando in Madrid. For seven months, he sketched at the museums and on the streets of Madrid, experimenting with the use of light and color. That winter, he went to New York and discovered the works of the post-war Impressionist and Cubist, who became the major influence on his works. On his return to Manila, he set up his own studio. Historical Context of the Document Juan Luna y Novicio In 1881, Luna's paintings were shown for the first time abroad at an annual exhibition in Madrid called Exposición Nacional de Bellas Artes. His La Muerte de Cleopatra took a silver medal and established his artistic career. In 1884, at the same exposition, he displayed Spolarium which won three gold medals and garnered him critical praise. During this time period, Luna also completed the paintings La Batala de Lepanto, which was commissioned by the King of Spain. He moved to Paris in 1885 and established a studio where he painted El Pactor de Sangre. In 1887, he returned to Madrid and won high acclaim for his paintings La Batala de Lepanto and Rendición de Granada. Fernando Amarsolo y Cueto Amarsolo was known as the painter of Philippine sunlight because his illuminated landscapes displayed the magnificence of the country's sunshine and portrayed traditional Filipino customs, culture, fiestas, and ordinary occupations such as rice harvesting and mango picking. His pastoral works presented an imagined sense of nationhood in counterpoint to American colonial rule, and were important to the formation of Filipino national identity. Amarsolo's use of chiaroscuroan, the Italian term for a backlighting technique, meaning light-dark, that involves the interplay of light and dark, became his artistic trademark as well as his greatest contribution to Philippine painting. In a typical Amarsolo painting, Figures are outlined against a characteristic glow. 
and intense light on one part of the canvas highlights nearby details. Only one painting by Amersolo is believed to include rain, A sunlight was his constant element. Art historian Eric Torres describes Amersolo's sunlight paintings as overflowing with sweetness and optimism. Others consider his countryside paintings to be the true reflection of the Filipino soul. Some historical works of Juan Luna y Novicio. First, El Spoliarium. Second, España Guiando y Filipinas. Third, Interior Dion Cafe. Some historical works of Fernando Marsolo y Cueto. First, Fruit Gatherer. Second, Fruit Pickers Harvesting the Mango Tree. Third, Tinikling in Barrio. Fourth, Making of the Philippine Flag. Fifth, Nude. Sixth, Palay Maiden. Seventh, Portrait of Don T. Yuchenko. Eighth, Sunday Morning Going to Town. Analysis of the important historical information found in the document. Works of Juan Luna y Novicio. Number 1. El Spoliarium. Juan Luna's Spoliarium, one of the most well known paintings in the nation, won a first class medal at the Madrid Exposition of Vine Arts in 1884, making it a historical triumph for Luna and the Philippines as a whole. The life-sized sculpture depicts the Spoliarium, the name given to the Roman Colosseum basement where defeated gladiators were dumped after battle. The central image shows two dead gladiators being dragged by Romans. Scavengers look at the dead man's property on the left while a Roman stands next to them and raises a fist in anger. On the right, a woman laments the loss of a loved one. While in swirl of smoke, an elderly guy looks for a body. The portrayal of Roman brutality in the artwork has been read as an, ano as an analogy for the Philippines, condition under Spanish control. Spoliarium was the kind of painting that lent itself to the patriotic needs of the Filipinos and on which Rizal and others projected a nationalistic symbolism that helped rouse the Filipinos to rise up against the political oppression of their Spanish colonizers. In Rizal's words, Spoliarium was a symbol of our social, moral, and political life. Humanity unredeemed, reason and aspiration in open fight with prejudice, fanaticism, and injustice. Second, España y Filipinas, Spain and Philippines. In the picture España y Filipinas, two female figures stand in for the colonial ties between Spain and the Philippines. Juan Luna was a skilled academic painter, and his work demonstrates his command of 19th century aesthetic principles. España y Filipinas is an allegorical painting, using two female figures to represent the colonial relationship between Spain and the Philippines. Juan Luna was an accomplished academic painter, and this painting shows his mastery of 19th century visual conventions. To depict the march to, to progress sought by Filipino reformists in the 1880s, Luna used a tall, narrow canvas. This formal this format helps, uh, helps focus on the grand steps strewn with palms of victory and flowers, while also emphasizing the regal pose of Mother Spain and Daughter Philippines looking upward to the sky to signify bo both their hope and intente cordiale. Spain holds her ward on the hips as if guiding her on their ascent. Third, Interior Don Cafe. Interior Don Cafe or Inside a Cafe painting is also known as the Parisian Life, even titled in some books as the Maid and Un Coquette, or literally someone who is one step lower than prostitutes, painted by Juan Luna. He is known to use prostitutes as models in his painting sessions for a very obvious reason. They are paid cheap. In 1904, at the World Fair's St. Louis Exposition in the United States, this painting won silver medal. With a third interpretation, Luna also exposed the Philippines in a disturbed state during the Spanish Revolution in 1892 through the uncomfortable position and about the cry face of the woman. The three gentlemen in the left corner were identified as the three Filipino heroes, Dr. Jose Rizal, Juan Luna, and Ariston Baptista discussing the state of the country being under stress. 
The coat and hat at the couch symbolizes Western lifestyle, particularly identifying the people of Spain, while the levels of beers in the table were also interpreted on how the Spaniards take advantage of the country, and the newspaper pointing the back of the woman tells how the Philippines was inspired by the French Revolution. Next, we have the works of Fernando Amorzalo y Cueto. First, Fruit Gather. The women I paint should have a rounded face, not of the oval type often presented to us in newspapers and magazine illustrations. The eyes should be exceptionally lively, not the dreamy, sleepy type that characterizes the Mongolian. The nose should be of the blonde form but firm and strongly marked. So the ideal of Filipina beauty should not necessarily be white complexioned, nor of the dark brown color of the typical Malayan, but of the clear skin or fresh colored type girl type which we often witness when we met a blushing girl. This was Fernando Amarsolo's message towards the painting. Since 1950, the painting has been a prime example of contemporary art. In his painting Fruit Gatherer, Fernando Amarsolo shows a woman sitting beneath a bamboo tree with a winnowing basket full of fresh fruits. It also depicts the day-to-day -day activities of a, of a woman who lives in a region where fresh fruits, vegetables, and other food items may be found. Second, Fruit Pickers Harvesting the Mango Tree The artwork is entitled Fruit Pickers Under the Mango Tree. It was painted by Fernando Amarsolo, a famous Filipino artist. The painting shows one of the aspects of Filipino culture, being happy, even though they are hard at work, as well as the Filipinos' close ties with each other. It also shows the capability of women to work and to be dependable. The women's beauty in simplicity was rep represented, from the face of the woman in the middle up to their clothes. Also, this was painted during the time when there was a rise in women's rights. Fernando Marsala created this painting during the year 1937. This year was the rise of women's rights. Many events for the Filipinas occurred during that time. One, the Philippines held a plebiscite for Filipino women on whether, they, on whether they should be extended the right to suffrage. Over 90% voted in the affirmative. Also, for the first ever Filipino women were given the right to vote during the elections. Third, Tinikling in Barrio. Amrisolo placed second in the bazaar escolta competition sponsored by the Aso Asociación Internacional de Artistas in 1908 with his painting, Leendo Periodico. Influenced by Joaquín Sorolla during his stay in Spain, he learned his distinctive approach to lighting, to lighting wherein he expertly employs the various hues and luminosity of the sun. Among Amrisolo's depictions of idyllic Filipino life, the Tinikling dance is one of its most famous and frequent subjects, a traditional folk dance that originated from the Spanish colonial period. It was a result of various cultures and specific influences from Luzon and Visayas. The dance often invol involves two or four parallel pairs of bamboo poles that are held by two or more sitting or kneeling people. The, pol the poles are used as percussive instruments accompanying music played with string instruments. Only a few classical folk paintings of the dance exist outside of Amorzolo's own body of work given the rigorous technical skill and talent required to, to properly immortalize the brief moment or movement and dance. Fourth, Making of the Philippine Flag The painting shows three women namely Marcelia Marino de Agoncillo, which is on the right side, referred as the mother of the Philippine flag. Fernando Marsolo used natural light in his paintings and developed the backlighting technique Chiaroscoro. Fernando Marsolo made this painting to show the citizens of the Philippines of how the Philippine flag was made and to remind them the traditions and customs that we did not realize it becomes faded. General Emilio Aguinaldo gave them the assignment to sue the first flag for the fledgling country. The three women devoted suing the place their class. Although not particularly eye-catching, the picture might calm down, might calm you down rather. The painting's major colors were brown, red, blue, and yellow. The scene is within a house that resembles a bahay kubo. This picture might be thought of as having a quiet and tranquil vibe. This picture is thought to have been created by Fernando Marsolo to remind Filipino citizens of long-forgotten traditions and practices and to demonstrate how the Philippine flag is manufactured. Fifth, we have nude. 
As evidenced by his nude works, the artist had a deep appreciation for the human body, delightfully reveling in painting such a theme. As Silvia Amorsolo Lazo writes in Amorsolo, which is the love and passion, revelatory are his splendid classical drawings of the Spanish woman, which were the nationality of the artist not known, could have been drawn by a European artist. The name Larita has been conferred enduring fame as the Spanish woman who served as Amorsolo's model in his nude works. Rare are Amorsolo's nude paintings for the celebrated artist painted only a few of this art form. Amorsolo's nude women are often in seclusion, living their solitary lives as exemplified by this remarkable painting. The female body in its bare state becomes the beauty ideal for understanding the in intricacies of the human form. Amorsolo also exhibits his characteristic as a true Filipino gentleman painter. The woman gazes from afar, confidently flaunting her posterior, averting her eyes, and turning her back from the viewer. Even in the privacy and the intimate act of caressing oneself, Amorsolo's nudes still convey an inherently alluring yet dignified modesty. 6. Palay Maiden The 1920 oil painting Palay Maiden shows a portrait of a woman carrying grain a crop that is widely farmed in the nation. Another worker is in the field to the right of the artwork, and the farmland can be seen in the backdrop. The picture itself is a figurative since it shows how crops, specifically grain, are harvested in the Philippines. As was previously said, the artwork shows farming in the Philippines, including the cultivation and harvesting of grain. The woman in the image seems content and is thrilled with the harvest that they are gathering. There is obviously still a lot of grain that has to be gathered based on the field behind the woman and the other worker in the field. The painting can reflect a variety of aspects of Filipino culture and life. It may be taken as the artist's interpretation of beauty. People might interpret and prefer things in different ways. Considered to be beautiful, and Amorsolo explains what he means by beauty. The simplicity of farming and the attraction of earlier times can be expressed via art. There are many comforts in our contemporary industrialized environment, but there are also numerous problems. Some people may have nightmares about how easy it was, it was to grow up in the country, and this artwork can give them a glimpse of those days. Number 7. Portrait of Don Tiyachenko The Tiyachenko Museum joins the Marsolo retrospective with an exhibit tilted Mukanchinoy that draws inspiration from portraits of Enrique and Maria Yuchenko in the collection and fits with a fundamental thematic trust of the museum to highlight the culture, stories, and expressions of the Filipino Chinese, also known as Chinois, people of Chinese ancestry portrayed in the Philippines. The public is now able to see several of these Amersolo photographs of Chinoy personalities for the first time. During the 1930s Commonwealth era, Fernando Amersolo rose to prominence as a renowned painter. Amersolo was a well-known painter of a variety of subjects in addition to portraiture. High-ranking government officials, wealthy and powerful businesses, and their families preferred him as an artist. Amersolo also painted portraits of the Chinois or Chinese-born people having enduring ties to the Filipino people and to the country's soil. Amersolo caught a glimpse of their historically developing identity at a period when they were already at ease, successfully assimilated, and confident of their place in society. Number 8. Sunday Morning Going to Town Amersolo depicts a romanticized image of rural life in the Philippines in one of his most recognizable themes. A family leaves their hut together and travels to an unknown location. They are left to cover themselves with either the available natural shade or, in the instance of a woman in the middle, a pink parasol as the early sun pours light on them. Even the cocks seek cover from the sweltering sun by hiding behind a stack of hay in a nearby corner. The guys enlist a carabao's assistance to transport the season's harvest as the journey ahead is not without its challenges. They are carrying homemade sacks on their backs. The artist is unafraid of the lowly realities of the margins, 
The rising sun sheds lights on the route ahead. The bright color of the parcel breaks up the kaleidoscope of greens and yellows. It appears as though Amar Solo captured the jubilant, resolute spirit of the setting and its inhabitants. Fourth, contribution of the document in understanding the grand narrative of Philippine history. Juan Luna y Novicio. Juan Luna is one of the prominent Filipino artists in the Philippines with his arts. He largely regarded as the Philippines' best and most influential painter, with paintings on display in several of the country's most prominent museums, including the National Museum and the Lo Lopez Museum. Juan was not just an artist. He was a revolutionary and influential political activist who was, who was, an, who was an active participant in the Philippine Revolution that took place in the late 19th century. In contrast to idealism, which was accompanied by justice, fanaticism, and instances of prejudice, his polyarium had created a clear image and persona of an open confrontation between reason and idealism. The historical polyarium is Juan Luna's most significant accomplish accomplishment. Of this amazing picture, the sociological circumstances in the Philippines are brilliantly represented. Fernando Marsolo y Cueto Fernando Marsolo is one of the most prominent Filipino painters to influence the nation even after his death. Throughout World War II, Fernando's art and painting productivity were unaffected, and he emerged as one of the best wartime artists. Don Al Alonso Ongpin, a powerful Philippine collector, commissioned him to paint a picture of General Douglas MacArthur in his absence, which exposed Fernando to a variety of hazards and perils. During this time, he painted several Japanese occupation troops as well as some self-portraits. He had an exhibition of his wartime paintings in 1948 at the Malacanang Presidential Palace. Amersolo was known as the painter of Philippine sunlight because his lighted landscapes portrayed customs, culture, fiestas, and regular jobs like gathering mangoes and rice among other ordinary activities in the manner of the Filipinos. His pastoral paintings presented an imagined sensation of the nationhood in contrast to American colonial control, which helped the Filipinos build their sense of national identity. The purpose of Amarsola's artwork was to demonstrate the genuine worth of the Filipinos. They put in a lot of effort, yet they really like what they do. Additionally, to let the world know about the genuine Filipina beauty, these paintings overall goal was to capture a distinctive warmth of the Filipino people. By examining the characters in the painting, this can be demonstrated. Not only that, but examining the past shows its genuine significance. Fifth, relevance of the document. By showcasing their abilities and using their works as a means of informing the public about what is actually happening in the Philippines, Juan Luna and Fernando Marsolo contributed to the nation's rise to international recognition. Juan Luna and Fernando Marsolo became symbols of the greatness of the Filipinos despite coming from various periods in the nation's history. This was due to both of their artistic accomplishments as well as their passion for the motherland and its inhabitants, which was evident in the works of art. Juan Luna and Fernando Marsolo's paintings, visions, and lives can serve as an example for upcoming generations of artists and painters, encouraging them to pursue their passions and show the beauty of the world through their works.